Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time and space that God has created especially for us. Over this last year we've had our struggles personally and as families, as churches and as communities. We've also had much to be thankful for. It has been a long year. And especially over these last seven weeks, eight weeks, as we've gone through the Lenten season and into Easter, it's been long and arduous for us as pastors. So this week I took some time for myself spiritually and mentally and physically just to recoup a bit. So what you're about to see is one of my favorite services that I've done with all of you <clears throat> over this last year, which happened to fall on the third Sunday of Easter of last year. It was my favorite to tape and one of the favorite messages that I've given over the last year. I hope that in this time that we're together, as you listen to this message again, you find a beautiful and wonderful way in which to be rejuvenated, to relax and come to peace, and to find that God, different voices, different places, same God. God bless you all. Enjoy the service. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this day that God has created especially for you. A day where all of creation resounds, speaking out hallelujah for the risen Lord. Let us praise our God and the beautiful creation he has made especially for us. Come, let us worship in the space God has created. Let us be a part of that creation with one another and all that God has made. Welcome. Good morning. This morning I'm coming to you from Willow River State Park. I decided to come out into God's sanctuary to be a part with creation, to worship, not necessarily in the sanctuary where we normally gather, but where God created the beauty of life, the beauty of this day. Let us be in worship with one another as we join in our call to worship. Although we are apart, we set out on our spiritual Easter journeys together. Let us remember the disciples were also not all gathered in one place during this time on their journeys. Lord, we come as your disciples. Guide us on our journeys. Our God is even with us while we're apart, especially while we're apart. Lord, bind us together with your Spirit. Like the disciples, we are all starting out from different points of faith upon our journeys. Yet, we come together in the Spirit as the body of Christ. God made miraculous things happen through the trials and tribulations of the disciples, even when their faith was shaken and in question. Come, Lord, and move through us with your miraculous power. Let us worship the God of all creation for the many blessings of spirit, health, and faith 
along this journey we are now on. Let us worship indeed. Praise be to the God that created all and for all that we have. Let us join in the hymn for the beauty of the earth. Please join me in our invocation. The response will be from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. Holy One, we call upon your Trinity to be with us as we worship you in love and honor this morning. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Give us the sight in this hour to see all the good you are doing for us and through us. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Help us to see you in the blessings all around us, even when our faith is shaken by the unknown of the future. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Strengthen us when our hearts falter, when fear and anger arise in us. Give us your compassion to love all your people as we love you. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Through this worship, may others find hope and strength, faith and peace, as we reach out to you even in our moments of struggle, Lord. For we worship you in love and faith for how you have shown yourself to us. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on his name as long as I live. Here are reading from 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb 
without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of our God. The reading of God's word, may it have rich blessings. Please join me in the hymn, The Church's One Foundation. Mutual love, despite the circumstances. That's the first part of this morning's message, based off of 1 Peter. We have found faith in God because of what we know of Jesus. Not only through scripture, but through our churches, through our families, through the way in which God has moved in our lives whether in times of crises or times of joy, whether in the easiest times or the hardest, we have seen the face of God in various ways. But this morning I want to talk about brass tacks. I want to talk about the situation that is here now. Because we are called to a mutual love, to a grace that we fall under despite 
anything we've done, any sin we've committed, God chose to forgive us and did so in the most loving and sacrificial way. And now we sit in a time where we're getting tired of where we're at. It's hard to be apart. And we're beginning to behave in ways maybe we shouldn't. Maybe aren't so loving. We're beginning to become political rather than spiritual. And that's a hard place to be. I'm a firm believer that there are very few people that wake up in the morning and think to themselves, hmm, how can I this life today? How can I make somebody else miserable? No. Most people get up with the intention to do well, or at least the best they can, given their circumstance. And we're all on various parts of our journey, as were the disciples. And in Peter, we hear about the sacrifice God has made through Jesus Christ and how that sacrifice helped to purify us. So when I say I want to talk about brass tacks, I want us to take the same steps of thought and love and kindness, of grace and mercy that our God took. Despite where we stand on any of the issues that are out there today, because there are others that are in very different spots than we are. When you look at it, we're still sitting very, very good. We're not as comfortable as we were three, four months ago, but we still have all we need to survive. And God is continuing to provide. And he provides through the love and generosity of many people just like us. The hard part is when we begin to look at people and assume they're out to get us. That in some way or fashion, they want to harm us. Instead of looking at them as one of God's created. And somebody else who is trying to do the best they can with what they have. We have to be cautious. You see, the disciples weren't in much of a different place as we're going to hear about in the second part of this message. They were in a place where they too were afraid that people were out to get them, that God would somehow forget them because they lost Christ. And yet God chose to move through those people endowed them with a mutual love and respect for one another and for the creation that God has made. It's the whole reason I chose to be out here today. To look around and see all that God's hand has made. And to realize how trivial certain things we worry about are. I heard a comedian the talking about how he couldn't understand how people thought. And he referred to them as dumb thoughts and dumb ways of speaking. And the thing he used to really put it across was one of these. And he said, you know, we get upset when it doesn't move as fast as we want it to move. Give it a second. It wasn't all that long ago that we didn't have cell phones. Or we talk about how we hate our carrier because it doesn't work the way we'd want it to all the time. And he made the point that this little device is shooting a beam from here out to space and back to here. 
there's going to be some glitches. And the same is true of many of the things that we do. Many of the things we complain about. And yet, we have this. This beautiful creation. And in this creation right here, there is life, there is death, there is beauty and there is ugliness. There is decay living right alongside growth. Enough. See one tree making another tree. But instead their circumstance, whether they're in the process of decaying or growing. Mutual love for one another. Let us too take the time to have mutual love for one another. Disregarding what our feelings are and looking at what God has created and the beauty and love that God has made to be all around us. Not only in this place, but in our homes, in our towns, in our states, in our world. Let us live in the same grace, love, and forgiveness that our God created for us and shows to us. From the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they indeed had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The reading of God's word for your enrichment. Different places, different voices, same God. That's the second half of our message today. Last week I had listened to another sermon by another pastor whose name is Lucas Williams. He's the head pastor right now at St. Stephen's Church in Merrill, Wisconsin, where I grew up. And he made a point last week while looking at the scripture to talk about the timing of where things are at as we follow this story. Because for us, it's been three weeks. Three very long weeks for many people. But in our story, it's only been hours. It started out with the women going to the tomb on Easter morning. And then coming back, and Simon Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved went to the tomb. And they saw, and they came back and told the disciples. Then we hear the next story of how Jesus shows up while they're behind locked doors, afraid of what's going to happen. And he shows himself again. And then you have our story from today, which is just later in that same day where two more disciples are walking along. And Jesus shows up with them and talks with them in a way that they can understand. Different places, different voices, same God. We couldn't have anything more pertinent 
to where we're at today. Whether we were in the middle of what we're going through, or if this was just any other day, we are at different places on our journeys. We need to hear God in different ways. But we still need to hear that call of God. We need to hear the voices that God has intended for us and the callings God has for each of us. There is nothing more important than that because it's in there. It's in those messages with the different voices in the different places that we find our hope. A hope of salvation, of forgiveness, of grace. And many times, that hope and those voices are from the people that are around us. Who are in a better place in their faith journey. Or who have experienced something we're experiencing. But in a much different way. But we hear their story. We share with one another as best we can what our situation was and how God moved in our world. There's no greater way to show the love of God than to let somebody hear your story. But that's awful hard to do when rather than looking for the common ground that we have, we're looking for those places that separate us. When we're so busy with our emotional responses that we can't see or hear or feel where other people are at. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because when that happens, we become bitter. We become indifferent. We stop looking at the welfare of others and begin only to focus on how we feel. Whether we're right. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Especially when God made such a sacrifice just for people like you and me. Created all of this for you and me. Simply out of love. Love for these simple little pudgy white things. We call human beings. God has called us to love one another despite where we're at on our journeys. God has called us to different places at different times. And not necessarily in ways that are even close to being similar. We have all these disciples hearing from Jesus firsthand what's happening. Seeing the nail holes in the pierced side. And yet, they have a hard time accepting and believing. That gives me hope when I have a hard time accepting and believing. What also gives me hope is that Jesus came to each one of these groups. Where they were, sometimes twice compassionately, lovingly, telling them again the truth of what was going on. That he had risen. That they had gained eternal life. That there was hope for their future. And that he had a mission for them. A mission to go out and spread the good news. One of my favorite passages is the one where Jesus says, I no longer call you slaves, but friends. 
Jesus has come to a new place with us. Has come and met us where we are at for this moment, knowing that we were in need of hope and love, forgiveness and grace. All I ask of all of us is that we take the time to step back, to see the world through the other person's eyes, to look at where they're at and try to find what their need is. Regardless of what we think of where they are on their journey, regardless of how we feel their faith is at the moment. Every one of the disciples had trouble with faith. Every one of them didn't quite believe that Jesus could be risen yet. We know the truth. That not only is Christ risen, but that we have gained hope and salvation, forgiveness and grace, redemption, through the sacrificing love of God. Because God chose to step back, to listen to our calls, to realize the voice we needed to hear for the place we were at. Let us meet one another where we are at. Let us love each other for what we are. God's holy creation. And beyond all else, let us bind together as the body of Christ, knowing that God is with us, different places, different voices, same God calling. May God bless you and keep you today. May you hear God's voice and realize how blessed you are that God has come to where you are today rather than waiting for you to catch up. And all God's people said, Amen. Please join me in our unison prayer for guidance and strength, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy Creator, You have created all the blessings of this day. We call on you to guide us in the days to come. Remind us of the love you have shown us once again, that we would look to others and deal compassionately. It is by your grace that our own shortcomings and short-sightedness are forgiven. Help us to build up one another in love, rather than tearing one another down in fear and anger. Give us the strength to stand compassionately alongside one another, despite our differences of opinion and the perspectives we hold as truth because of where we are on our journeys. Help us stand in your truth, the truth of love and sacrifice, when those who are not where we are seem feeble of mind or faith. Grant us your wisdom in building one another up in love, even though we believe we are the ones that are right. Once again, bind us together as a family of love, the body of Christ, as we pray together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our benediction. As we end this worship, let us go in peace. For Christ does not give as the world gives. Be in love and be in the love of Christ. Let us be in the same heart and mind as that of Christ. Know that you are loved, even while we are apart. Let us be in this world 
and in the peace of Christ, showing love to our neighbors as we love ourselves. Be in peace. Amen. Please join me in the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. My friends, we thank you for joining us in worship today, and we hope that this has been a blessing to you. All that we do here, we try to spread God's word and love to each and every person. Now, if you could do us a favor as we continue these ministries, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and help us to use all the tools possible here at YouTube. And also, if you're able and willing, to hit the Donate Now button, help us to continue these ministries using the financial means that we are going to need. In all that you do this week, may God bless you and keep you. May you be blessed and be a blessing unto others. Go in peace and amen.